no, there is no one. There is no one. I think it's a good there thing no because Roman kids have done something. Today we are going to be checking out the Tower of London Poopies. Um, this is the first time ever reaction to these and we are really curious to be checking this one out with you guys. But if you're new you're on the channel, welcome. And please make sure you like, subscribe. The links to their channel will be down below. So let's get right into today's reaction. In 2014, artist Paul Cummings, Paul Cummings and, and Tom, Tom Piper, Piper along with historical royal players, had a vision to fill the mouth of the Tower of London with 888,246 ceramic puppies, one, one puppy for each British oh and my colony. God. Wow. Oh my wow. God. wow. 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 221,000 people. Oh people god, travel. 5 million people travel from around the world. I was just in awe of how many people were here. Honestly, um, it's just really nice to see the support from the whole city. Um, it's such a lovely way to commemorate it. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. Magic. Yeah. Really moving. It is very moving. Tremendous. Whether it's young people or old people, they've come in their hundreds, they've come in their thousands, and they've stood on the um, behind the railings looking down into the moat really from early in the morning until late at night. And I think why it's caught the imagination of the country is this particular number of 888,246. They fought in mass armies, but they were individual soldiers. And each poppy represents an individual life lost and a family shattered. I think people can understand that. Well, it's actually so good to see that um, in 2001, this was you know, actually made. The World War was like far gone. Like in, I know the early, the first war was in the, um, a very long time, the Second World War, 1945. And seeing the remembrance of the soldiers, yeah. like they still remember them for their great service and um, the um, fight during the war, it's, it actually break my heart to see because when we react to World War II, both of our videos, you see there people saying my grandfather was a soldier, my mm -hmm. father, you know, stories from people and families that actually you know went through this um, tragic moment and to see these remembrances the things about the european nation is they have this um lies i don't know i'll say selflessness if you would ask me right in the sense that right, when it all matters they are always there look at the 9 11 video we watched recently mm. you know it was not in their nation but for, for they paused and sang the american and then, people volunteered. Volunteered. Five million people traveled all the way from everywhere they are. Actually, for me, I would just say it's just the thoughts. That like, yeah. Even if it didn't actually come out to be fine, but like just the, the intentions. Like, and the intention, like actually, it's been a long time, and you actually remember these people, and yeah, and want to like do something to celebrate them and to honor them, like. Like my son was in the army as well. He served in Ireland, he served in Bosnia. And when I see that, I'm just really, really grateful that he came back. My mother is from Canada and her, I believe, grandfather is in the war. So my mom wears a poppy every year. But. Yeah, that, that's what it's about. It's, you know, it's appreciation. It's always a little bit of appreciation. I mean, my father died from his injuries from the Second World War. I lost four brothers during the First World War too, so obviously that's where my passion comes from. But we're all in the same boat. You know, you have that four or five, wasn't it? This would be London, it? So, and I love London. So. And so I think it, it's become a, a kind of a place of pilgrimage, not 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 just a place where you see see this artwork, or not just a, a place of, of of commemoration because it's here. It's just become a kind of national focus. It started us asking questions about who who we are, what what are we doing when we're commemorating, how how warlike are we as a nation. The thing about this is it reminds you that these people were human beings, just as you are a human being, just as the military, you know, the military person are human beings. And, and that, that interconnection, yeah, it, it, it's, it's kind of everything. It breaks down the barriers uh, of them versus us, or uh, just a vast quantity of numbers. And I was at the closing sort of ceremony today, and, and the last poppy got put in and you, by a little boy, and you think, that's a life, and you look around, and there's more than 800,000 war lives, and it really, it does hit you. Sometimes you look at the vastness of it, and it's beautiful.
beautiful but hard to comprehend. And then this one poppy goes down and you think, okay, yeah, this is this is rather this is rather a lot. Yeah. We've had so many volunteers, so many people making the poppies, the whole of the Yeoman Water staff, the HRP staff, the number of people involved has been enormous and I think um, un unusually for a large art it doesn't mm. isn't then dominated by a single person or a single uh, ego of, of an, an artist. In a sense, though, I, me and Paul treat ourselves and believe that we are artists and this is an artwork. Because we've been very open about it, I think we've allowed so many other people into it to take ownership of it. Nobody that you've met on the project has been a bad seed. It's been a bunch of. We've seen um, each puppy um, actually represent a life. It reminds me of a video I saw when a startup rings brought out from the hands of, you know, um, dead soldiers, you know, and um, we were like, this is like a lot of um, amazing love story that was cut short due to the war. And um, to see these soldiers actually volunteered to fight for their country with the cost, at the cost of their lives is... Remarkable. It's remarkable. Yeah, that's the selfless out. Like, that's one of the things that makes me respect the military men so well because they're so selfless to stand even knowing that the next moment can be your last. Because wearing that uniform, you're a target. Like somebody can just like attack you. You don't want to lose your attacker. But still standing up there and defending people, knowing that anything can happen to you, like I respect them so much. So seeing this like just warm my heart so Because even the man that spoke, he said um, his father was a uh, part of it. He, he said it casually, but he, there was a lot there. His father died in the service. He, yeah. There's this, I don't know, it's just, I can't, the military and the world war, it was a very devastating thing that happened in the world. And seeing this commemoration of them is... A lot of love, a load of stories that you really love to hear. And just the community has come so, to, I'm from the America, from the US, and the, the UK spirit here has made me really proud that I moved here. <laughs> I've been here seven years and it. I love the spirit of this project. It's just been amazing, amazing. <laughs> so. People are able to bring their own family stories to it. Um, grandparents can explain to their grandchildren how they connect into, into this story of our nation. We just have to remember, I mean, they gave their lives so that we can live yeah. in peace today. And you know, what greater gift can you give than your There is none, there is no I think, to I think it's a good there thing no because we're remembering people who've done something for us and who've lost their lives while doing that. And the least we can do, obviously, is remember them. We've invited members of the public to send in the names of a loved one who lost their lives in the First World War. And we've read out about 200 every evening. Wow. And we've done that every evening from the 5th of August through until today. I read the last list at 11 o'clock on the 11th. Wow, did you see what they said? That they read the names of the soldiers that, are, that fell every The installation evening. is going to live on in a new, different way uh, in the next four years. You know, that there's the first thing, which is that them all going out to the general public, the people who bought them, and then having their own kind of tiny fragment of the, of the installation. And then there are the two sculptural pieces, which have been kindly bought for the nation and we can take to various different locations to create some some new installations relating to new buildings or new landscapes that can create a different kind of narrative on a on a smaller scale and then the fact those are going to the imperial war museum and we'll be there you know for a long time as a a focus for commemoration i've just come out of the um of the volunteers office and there's what we call the measles map which is um, a little red dot on every part of the map where the volunteers have come from and it goes from Singapore to Iceland from Guinea and Sierra Leone to the to the west coast of the of the United States it's an absolutely incredible geographic spread and I think that the the, the names on the roll of honor every night have come from all over the Commonwealth countries and then these poppies are going off around the world and what we really want to happen is that we want to we want to send these poppies home now the the soldiers never never got to go home but you know a lot of them will they shall grow not old as we who are left grow old age shall not weary them nor the years condemn at the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them we will remember them. We will remember them. 
I, I salute every single soldier that lost their life during that war that could not come back home. You are the heroes of the nation. You will never be forgotten. Yeah. You will never be forgotten. We actually can't dispute this thing. People can't throw. You can actually play it during the war. Most especially the World War II, we've actually, you know, witnessed, not actually witnessed, like, check research and seen video about, because um, the, um, I think, um, the 13 hours that saved British, right? Yeah. You could see, like, men literally running to the aircraft, knowing that could be their last moment on... But they still went. They still dove in. Yeah. Like knowing too well that your life is not guaranteed, but just think about the next person that will live on. Because if um, not, yeah. if not for the um, Britain and um, them um, attacking the um, Germany, I wonder what this world would have been like now with the intentions of the Nazis. You guys, this was ah, you know, it got to me really because seeing that video and seeing these puppies, mm -hmm. like seeing the remembrance of them is. I'm happy they did something like that because they deserve more. Like they deserve more. If it's our remembrance that is going to keep them and their, you know, their yeah. faithfulness and loyalty towards us and people, they are gonna be doing that every day. Right. Yeah. Look to me, I feel these people they didn't always serve their country, they serve the world. The world, yeah. Because what if they didn't do those stuff? What would be of us today? That probably the Nazi will win and yeah, we just be asleep or marching under the flag. But like what they did to carry on. They, they, they gave us freedom. Yeah, the they freedom, gave us hope of living. Yeah, the freedom came with the cost of their life and they were willing to do that. So this is the least we can actually do to remember them and to keep their name living. And the earth is just his different. And the something the woman said. Yeah, she said something about them not getting home. Yeah, not getting home. And like and they were eager to do it. That's the whole thing. So yeah. This video really just everything to me, seeing the way they honored them and like, wow. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel. Love you guys and um, 